seven, eight lines into Daf Chaf Beis. And the, um, the Gemara had learned, I taught the, the various steps of Shneos. Shneos are erva that's not prohibited in the Torah. But nevertheless, as we saw last week, there are two, st- two types of erva that are prohibited as Shneos. Either things that are similar to an erva, and therefore if it's, per- it's permitted, then you may come to do an erva. Or because they are a relative of something that is aser, and therefore it should be aser uh, as well as shnir. So we have also a, a, a brayse of Rabbi Chia that's going to tell us shnir's sorry shnir's of Rabbi Chia, and the Gemara is going to explain a few uh, a, a few of them. Tani Rabbi Chia the very Rabbi Chia. So in the academy of Chia they taught shlishi shebe benoi v'shebe bitei. Third generation down from his son or his daughter. That means his great-grandchild, son, grandson, granddaughter, great-granddaughter, or daughter, grandson, great-granddaughter. That generation is not mentioned in Torah. But nevertheless, it's Shneos, it's going to be Aser, Midra Banan, as an Erva. Similarly, Ben Ben Similarly, his wife's great grandson, a great granddaughter uh, from the son or daughter. Um, Shnia, they would uh, they would be Shnias. Now, Ravi Shebachama Veshebachama Isi. Also, his wife's great grandmother, um, both uh, from his um, um, his mother in law or his father in law's grandparents. Now. Here it calls it a fourth generation because it counts the wife as well as wife, mother, grandmother, great grandmother. So to Ravina said to Ravashi, Why is it when counting down, you start with the child? You don't start wife's great grandchild and say four, four generations. You say child, grandchild, great grandchild. So, but when you're counting up, you count the wife as well. So the Gemara says, well, here it's counting from his mother up because from his wife up because it's actually a relative through his wife. Here it's his own uh, uh, descendants, and so therefore it counts. Um, it's it's a relative of his, so therefore it counts his three generations straight. What about his wife's kids? Where uh, it doesn't count as wife, even though it's his wife's great grandchild. So it should mention four generations. No, Sangamara says since when on the way down, we're counting his uh, three generations child, grandchild, great grandchild. So too, by his wife, it counts child, grandchild, great grandchild, even though that it really the relationship to him is one more because it first starts with the wife. And didn't count his wife. didn't count him. So this so far just says that the, the the equivalency essentially is the same. His great grandchild or his great grandmother or his wife's great grandmother is essentially the same relationship of. Four generations up, four generations down. Amalei Ravashi of Kana Shni is the Rabbi Chia Yesh lehen hefsika ein lehen hefsika. And this is I want to pause on this. And the question the Gemara asks is: You mentioned three generations down. You mentioned four generations up. Is that a limit, or it means ein lehen hefsika goes forever? And uh, just as we saw earlier uh, last week, we saw that. In the Shneos mentioned in that Brisa that, that Rav said four of them, Yeshlam Hefsek, have a stop, the rest continue forever. So uh, the Gemara asks over here, what you know what what's the case? So the Gemara says, Tashamad, I'm a Rav, Dal Nasha Yeshlam Hefsek Basulai. Well, he only counted four over there. So he says, No, you can't bring me proof because he's talking about that Brisa. We're talking about Rav Chia's Brisa. Maybe Rav Chia, he did not include. So Tashema he proves it because he says Shlishi Ravi Shlishi Ravi Since he numerated and said three generations down, 
four generations up, it's that and no more. So Gemara says, uh, how do you know? Um, Dilma, maybe he meant from three and on, from four and on, uh, from four generations up and on. And that's all he was saying. Up until that point, uh, it's going to be the Orisa. And this is only the Rabbana. And that's what he says from three generations, the third generation down is going to be rabbinic prohibition all the way down and, uh, and, and up as well. So uh, Tysus here asks a question. We already learned earlier that there's an Iser that, and for all generations, you're of a daughter-in-law, a daughter-in-law, or your son's daughter-in-law, or your grandson's daughter-in-law, or your great-grandson's daughter-in-law, for all generations are prohibited. If that's true, how can it be that your own great-great-great-granddaughter, the Gemara says maybe would not be a prohibition, but your great 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 dad granddaughter in law would be a prohibition. How 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 can that be? So so Tesis uh, uh, um, asks this question and answers a very interesting um, answer. Where should we? Be? We think that the prohibition over here of Shnias is on account of on account of, uh, you know, it's a relative. And as a relative, it should be prohibited. Texas says, perhaps that's not the case. Perhaps the question is, are they hanging around um, uh, and seeking money from the, uh, as an inheritance, and therefore they're going to have this, this, this closeness with the great grandpa and, and, and have a relationship. So a, a great grandson, and the daughter-in-law may try and get involved that way because they have an inheritance to go after. Whereas the great-granddaughter um, uh, does not have an inheritance to go after, and therefore she's not going to do it. So, so Tesis is saying a new idea here in Shneus, which as he started off with said that really it's either because it's a relationship close enough that people are going to confuse it and say, oh, that it, um, if this is permitted, so too is this permitted, and this is a total prohibition, or because it's a careful, because of a, because it's actually its own relationship, and it's a similar relationship to other prohibitions, so it's prohibited. Tesis is coming up with a new idea, something that we've never seen before, that the, the reason for Shania's, the reason for these ever prohibitions, is not going to be on account of any of the ideas we saw early in the Gemara, but rather... Because because maybe they're going to try and go after an inheritance, and uh, what better way than to to um, get married to great great grandpa, right? Uh, that that's that's the the um, uh, the, the thought that the great great granddaughter in law has what to get, and the great great uh, granddaughter does not have anything to get anyhow because she's not going to ha- get an inheritance. It's a very, I don't have a shot. I'm just saying, I'm just pointing out that this is a new Chiddush and Tesis that doesn't fit the rest of the, the uh, Shneas and Arais. Why, why wouldn't Tosis just said similar to, there was a concept we saw earlier that um, people have more Shaykhs to their father's family, right? Meaning that there's more of a sense that like there's a higher Korva, so people will kind of yeah, so, but that would either way. It's a father's family. It's his son, son, son's daughter-in-law, or his son, son, son's daughter. They're all they're all the same lineage. They're sisters-in-law. One's going to be right. us, and one's not. That's the question. Well, what I meant to say is that it sounds. That 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 time earlier, there's a that concept of what they were. There's a, a greater corva to your father. I thought also had the kind of sense of that there is more of a reason to be usher. So I, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting myself confused, but I would have thought that that's could have worked here, but yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think here you do have that relationship of the father. 
Anyhow, so the rush, the rush makes a distinction here. We have over here three, a list of three arayas, shneos of Rabbi Chia, his great granddaughter, his wife's great granddaughter, his great his wife's great grand great grandmother. Right, his wife's great grandmother, his mother in law's grandmother. Those are the three. The Gemara then asks, is there an le- end to these? Or, or, or is it that ju- just that generation or does it go forever? So the Rush says, as an answer to Tosis, about his own granddaughter, great-granddaughter, there was no question. The Gemara knew that goes on forever. The question was only about his wife's great-grandchildren and his wife's great-grandmother. About them, there was a question if that goes on forever or if it's only those three generations up and three generations down. And we call it four up and three down because it includes the wife on the way up, right? But on his own great-granddaughter, just as his own great-granddaughter-in-law is going to be prohibited and great-great-granddaughter-in-law is going to be prohibited, so to his own great-great-granddaughter would be prohibited. And that wasn't even a part of the question. And the rush brings a Yerushalmi. The Yerushalmi says that Avraham and Sarah, Avraham is prohibited in all of the Jewish uh, women in the world. And Sarah is prohibited in all of the Jewish men of the world. In other words, it, it, it's, it's a prohibition for all generations, children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, until the end of all the uh, generations. And that, and, and that was never a part of the question that the Gemara had. When the Gemara asked a question, when Rav asked this question, does it go on forever and ever or not? That question was not a part of uh, uh, Ravashi asked of Kananet. Um, it, that was not about his own descendants. It was only, and, and it, because that for sure is going to go on forever. It was only about his wife's descendants and his wife's uh, ancestors. That's where there's a question of whether it goes uh, on forever or not. Um, right, he quotes this uh, Yerushalmi. Um, now, he says that actually um, uh, the Rambam does not paskin like that. And the Rambam uh, it says, uh, yeah, holds that this question was, go, was on all things. But we have a question, uh, we have to, we do have to say, if it's true that the, 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 the prohibition goes to all descendants, then it should go also to all the ancestors. And indeed, we see that in the, in the rush because he says that it goes not only Avram, but also Sarah. That means a, a, a man's prohibition to his great, 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 great grandmother would also be the same. However, the, those that want to make a distinction and they want to say a chiddush in the Isser Erva, that the Isser Erva is only a man to his relatives, but there's no prohibition for the woman to her relatives. Essentially, it's the same, right? Because you can end up for every, uh, uh, for every possible relationship. Yeah, there's, there, it's going to go both ways, but it's only a prohibition to one and not to the other, to the male and not to the female. And, and therefore the prohibitions would be to all of his descendants, but it would not be to all of his ancestors because his ancestors, that means that the female doesn't have a prohibition. And so this, the, the relationship is different. There's a, 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 in Halacha, there is an opinion like this uh, in, in uh, the Mepharshim on the tour. However, it, 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 it needs, it definitely is not in the rush this way, because as we just said, the rush, quoting the Yerushalmi, does not say that the prohibition is only for his descendants, because it's also for her descendants, because it says just as Avraham is prohibited in all his descendants, all any Jewish woman, so too Sarah, being the mother of all the Jewish people, is prohibited in all the Jewish men. So we see that the, the, the prohibition of Erva goes uh, both ways, and it goes for all 
descendants. Yes, Max. Were you, were you reading um, the end of the Tosos's answer that the concern is that she'll marry him or that she'll just get close with him and um that's gonna be it it's ervo whatever yeah or no that she's like that's the hashash we needed to make an iser ervo because she's most likely to be there um so but just like in how how would she get a bigger yerusha though not a bigger yerusha but she wants the yerusha she wants right her husband has a part of the Yerusha, so she wants to be there to to um, get close to him in this way it will be favorable she'll get uh, the the parts she wants the field she wants i don't know exactly what it is but on account of Yerusha, she's hanging out there what's the what's the gazera up to like what's the gazera blocking where are you at this this theoretical gazera because of Yerusha. Right, because there's some Yerusha going on, therefore we're going to be gozer on a great great grand daughter in law, right? Right. So we don't make a gazera unless there's a derisa that we're protecting. So what's the what's the no, derisa? That's we're what I was at? asking. That's what I was asking. Tosa seems to coming be coming up with a new reasoning of of erva of of Shneos. not because it's maybe going to come to a, a, a derisa. It's similar to a daraisa, and not and not because it's a it, it's it's a specific type of kurva, but rather because because that they, they, they're going to be hanging out because of of Yerusha. It's can you read that the Yerusha is the reason that it's more shricha and shricha is the reason to be goes there? Yeah, I mean, isn't the word that shricha gabe and Yerusha is the cause for shricha? Correct. But the reason we goes there is shricha, and therefore the entire line is more chamer, right? Even the daraisa, the daughter-in-law. Would be more chamer because it's shlich I mean, but, but it's it's more chamer to be gozeran because it's more likely that a person will marry his daughter-in-law than he would his own daughter because they're more shlich uh, A great great granddaughter. It's not it's a, a gzera a, 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 a great great granddaughter. Sorry, great great granddaughter-in-law would be a gzera atu a, a daughter-in-law. It's but, more right to goes around that than to be goes around your great granddaughter because they're more shlich yeah, right, the but... flipping the svar, right? Before his habamina was that the, the it would be more right to be gozer on your blood relative than your marriage relative because you're more likely, right? Presumably the habamina was that you're more likely to marry. Um, that, that's that's more common in terms of the iser itself. Right, now he's flipping likely, and saying that it's more concerning it's... that it might happen. I'm yeah. Saying, right? Because that, that would be worse. because of Yerusha. What? It would be worse. Not because it's more likely to happen, because it's more worse. It, it, no. it's, it's just worse. That's the flip, right? I mean, the, I mean, the having it was that you go by what's worse. And as Chiddush is that it's more shriach, it's more likely because of the fact what's that more likely? A, it's more likely that a person would come to marry his daughter-in-law because she's more shriach agave. And therefore, it, therefore it's more right to be going there on that line. What? Therefore, even seven generations down. Yeah. I mean, the Durabanan would be more right to be goes around that line than to be goes around the bloodline. So you're saying Tesis also means because you may, if you see him marry, him marry his great, great, great granddaughter in law, maybe the next guy is going to marry his granddaughter in law. Yeah. And that's a Torah prohibition. Or, yeah, granddaughter in law, right. That's. It, it's it's a chiddush is difficult to, to for me to hear that you're more concerned about I, I mean the, the confusion is <clears throat> this is like the same relationship right that's what the Gemara before is saying it's the same relationship it's a daughter it's another daughter right it's another daughter another generation daughter but it's 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 the same relationship and now the whole saying, con- that was the concept before. Yeah, but the idea of the shneos are that there's that's asli lechlufe. No, it means a dorabanan right. is a but protection for dorabanan. So you're going to get confused with it. Right. Here you're saying no, it's not actually that. No, not, that is, well, that no, it's saying. not. It's just that I need I need a, 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 a um, because both of them are asli lechlufe. If yeah. I see someone marry his great great granddaughter, I may also think he can marry his great granddaughter. And if he marries his great 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 granddaughter, I may see the next person marry his granddaughter. I mean, the same right. Asilach Lufi is there. Tessus isn't changing the Asilach Lufi that I may confuse them. 
That hasn't changed. Yeah, he's just he's just changing where the emphasis of where we're where we're putting our gazeros. I mean, there's a lots and lots of Asi Lachlufes. We said that certain ones, it's like we're not so concerned for Asi Lachlufe because it's like low, low, like like people don't have those kind of relationships, right? So this is one where it's like because there's more shaykhs to like your daughters in law, they hang out in your house more. There's more of a reason to be concerned to be goes around those kind of situations, right? Meaning that we're switching the focus from that like. The, which one's the more chamer iser versus which one's the more likely iser? It's a new idea which we haven't seen. Okay. It's, 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 it, it to me seems a, a, a peculiar way to decide that it's an asilach lufi. The asilach lufi really seems to be will people confuse them? Um, and it, I, I hear your. What you're explaining nicely is the change in Tosis, very nice. That at first Tosis understood it to be, which is a, you know, a worse relationship, right? It's your your own flesh and blood, your great granddaughter, your great great granddaughter, and then Tosis is changing and saying, well, actually, which one is more likely to happen? Nice. But the issue is that that wasn't what the Gemara was saying as the reasons for us at Lechlof. It wasn't the reasons for Shneos were in which is more likely to happen. Right? That wasn't the basis. The basis is which is the type of relationship. Or is it a similar type of relationship that would get switched with it or something? Or if you can't marry the, 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 her, then you can't marry the husband, right? Whatever. Oh, there, there were rules. Tesis is coming up with a rule here, which we haven't seen. It's coming up with a new rule that if it's, you know, we, who's hanging out more, who's, who's around more, who's more likely to get caught up in this? We haven't seen that. I don't have a kasha. It's just like Texas is coming up with a new, a new distinction that wasn't there. Yeah. You're explaining nicely that, no, well, it's Xera, so maybe Chazal did that. That's what Texas is saying. My problem is that we, had, we just went through uh, you know, a, a lot of a lot of shneas and a lot of explanations of why Chazal made the Xeras. And here Tess is saying, oh, by the way, we have a new one, a new reason. Or actually, it's not even here. Tess is explaining way back when we talk about Kala, the reason was something that the Gemara didn't even talk about. It, 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 it's, it's somewhat... Um, Somewhat missing in the in the in the, in the Gemara. Maybe he feels like you don't need it as much because that's kind of a basis for Durabanans in general. It's something that's likely to happen or goes there on it. So even if they didn't say it specifically by Shneos, that's a basis for a lot of Durabanans. So it's not like he's coming from nowhere. Uh, oh, absolutely not coming from nowhere. Yeah, uh, I, it is a true concept. But Shneos is unique. It's not. It's not just a. Uh, a likely thing. We didn't see that. It's not, you know, here are the likely uh, issues that come up. None of these are all that likely. Right? Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to hear that um, somehow a great, great granddaughter-in-law think about that. A great, great granddaughter-in-law is more likely than a great, great grandchild. And both are not very likely. If we're talking about, uh, uh, about- you mean, you mean likely in the sense that they're likely, like, uh, meaning clearly Gamar feels that if we didn't, if we didn't have the Shneos, people would marry these kind of people, right? If we didn't have, let's say an Isra on your grandmother, the Gemara said very clearly on Chafal from Adalif that people would marry their mother, right? So it says, right, now that we have the, the Shneos on grandmothers, so people don't marry their mothers. But, but if we didn't have the Shneos, then it, apparently people would make a mental extension that like people would marry their grandmothers and then it would become likely, right? Meaning it would become I, I, shy, I, right? I, I, I would not word it that way at all. I How would did you not, understand? Yeah. I would not say that people will ma would marry their mothers. I think Amar is saying the Xera is because they are the same, and we don't want someone to make the mistake. The, the mashal on, on Chafalaf was that, was that, you know, you have the fence, right, the outer and the inner. So it says, so it says if you don't have the, you only have the outer, or if you take, get rid of the outer, then you don't, 
then you even don't have the inner, right? The mush, the nimshal seems to be that if you didn't have the shneos, you would also have people marrying their mothers. For sure. For sure that there was a reason for the gzera. But I, we're not talking about something that's a, a common thing. There are certain certain gzeras were because the mistake's going to happen a lot. And certain gzeras are because they're the same. Not because they were going to happen, but because they're the same. Right, so in the definition of shechicha, of like what's common, I don't, if you don't think that like marrying your mother is common, but it's right to make a shnia, so I, I don't know if I meant shechicha in the sense that like this is like a regularly occurring event that's going to happen like commonplace per se, but the idea that it's more shechiach to happen, that it's more, more something that could occur. It, in, a, in, a, in a world where you could marry your great-great-granddaughter-in-law, you could marry your, your great-granddaughter-in-law, right? Like that, that's shechiach. I, underst- I, I understand, but that's my, that precisely is my point. Since we're not dealing with li- with with likelihoods, right? There are some xeras that Chazal said this is a likely scenario, and so we have to make xero. I don't think that's the case here. But right. rather, like the Gemara said, because they are the same relationship, a mother and a grandmother. That's the same relationship, and so if people have to know, mothers are prohibited, and so grandmothers also have to be prohibited. So people know that motherhood. Okay, is prohibited, right? That's the Gemara, but it's not. It's not for the sake of uh, oh, we, this is going to become rampant. This is going to become a problem. I don't think that's the meaning of the Gemara. But if you're going to say in Tosis, that has to be the meaning, because Tosis' distinction is not if you say this relationship, because because great granddaughters and great great granddaughters are the same relationship, just as great great granddaughter uh, uh, granddaughter in laws are uh, the same relationship. it's all the same rather this is making a distinction oh but they're hanging around more it's more likely this is going into into the likelihoods now that's a different var i think there is a distinction i don't think i and, and, and perhaps it's because uh, maybe i should clarify i don't think the gemara on hafal of amaral is talking about likelihoods and likely mistakes I don't think that's what the Gemara is talking about. The Gemara is talking about uh, common conceptions. The conception that we have in our mind is, as far as Erva goes, a mother and a grandmother are the same. And therefore, if, if there, if there if would be no somebody, If there would be something like this, people would say, wait, that's permissible? Mothers are permissible? Even though it's a grandmother, people would just see them as the same. And you, they would lose that, that, that thing. I think that's the word. Asilach Lufa means that's the same, in people's mind, that's the same thing. And, but the result, right? I'm, I'm confused as to what you're switching, right? I mean, the result is still the same, though. People will marry their mother. Now, I don't know how many, how frequently, but it will happen. It will occur. Even if they're, it's their mindset, but that's the result. If nobody would if, ever marry if, their mother, we make sure. A person right. may. A person may. A person. A person. But Tesis isn't going in that. Tesis is talking about propensity. Tesis is talking about likelihoods. Now we're going into the the likely. What is the likelihood? And, 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 and yeah, you're, you're you're you're. This is your field, right? This is your field. Very good, very good. You're, you're you're. You have to assess this. What's the likelihood of a great great granddaughter? Being a, 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 a versus a great granddaughter, great granddaughter in law versus a great granddaughter in law. You know, that to me you, is, is minutia, it's so small, it's so hard for me to see that in this sugya that this is what we're worried about. The, the higher likelihood of a great great granddaughter. Sorry, the, the lower likelihood of a great great granddaughter than a great great granddaughter in law. You understand my problem? Like, I, 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 I we're, mean, we're not, we're no longer in, we're no longer in Asilach Lufi. We're no longer in, it's the same type of relationship and it's going to get mixed up in people's minds. Now we're in higher propensity. Yes, these are the same type of relationship, but this one may end up being. Uh, 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 a more common occurrence. 
Not that many people even see their great great grandchildren. Never mind uh, of age of them hanging around to, in order to get the Yerusha. Right. That's that's that. Tesis is going into a place of shchichus. What shchichus shchichus here? Common common occurrence doesn't seem right. Okay. If you think Tesis is, is smooth and good, fine. I, I, to me, it seems a little a little off. In any case, the rush the rush says that it, that it's not talking about a great grandchild. That that is the same. It's going to go on forever and ever, like the Yerushalmi. That. It, it goes on for okay. The next Gemara talks about a ger, and what are the halachas of a ger in regards to um, the relationship? So we know ger shanola ger kakat shanola dam ger shen is ger a ger that goes through um, gerus is uh, is kakat and shanola just like a, 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 a new birth. And creates a, a a lack of relationship to the to to um, the previous relatives, but nevertheless, halacha gives them that that relationship. Uh, and the Gemara says the reason for that. The reason for that is, well, um, because shaleyimru uh, people shouldn't say by mikedusha chamur le kedusha kala. They were. They used to be on a higher level of kedusha because there were certain things that were prohibited before that are not prohibited now, and therefore uh, they they are uh, prohibited. So this is the halacha of of erva. So even though technically speaking, they they would have a isurim beforehand, but they don't have the technically speaking they don't have the isur now. So her, her her brother, her her mother, her his his you know his 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 sister, his daughter, whatever that didn't convert with him, they are no longer halachic relatives. Nevertheless, they are prohibited on account of shaloyimru. That's the first part of the Gemara. The second part of the Gemara says. Um, uh, uh, Gerim, uh, 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 now that we're talking about it, we want to say that there's a distinction in witnesses. Two brothers that convert can be can testify. However, the Gemara makes a distinction and says if they are brothers from the same mother, so then they cannot testify because they... they Prior to their conversion, they also had a, a summer relationship. So now, too, they could have a relationship. Whereas, in um, if they're brothers from a father, so there that doesn't count. There's no relationship. There's no yichus to the father by a non-Jew, and therefore they don't count as brothers. And even after it becoming, uh, and therefore after their gerus, they can. Testify together. That's a gemara. Achim in a aim lo ye idu be midu edus and edus. Achim in a have me idu lechatchila. They don't have. They could lechatchila testify. Um. However, a meimer says no. They can all testify together. They don't have the invalid. They don't have the issue of brothers. And the gemara explains why. Erva is a problem because erva. People are going to make a mistake, and they're going to look at it and say, "Hey, those are relatives," and not realize that they converted, and therefore they're going to say, "Those are relatives," and they're marrying, and they're going to make a mistake. Whereas, by testimony, the Adas is happening in Basin. There's no such concern because it's happening in Basin. Basin's not going to make a mistake. Basin knows that it's on account of them getting uh, uh, being uh, uh, married. Uh, uh, sorry, the account of them having converted and Gerka cutting shanel them. Convert is like a new one. Fine, they don't have a religion. Rel- uh, they don't have uh, relatives. Now, Tesis asks a question, what do I need that for? Why don't we say the distinction is? Because by erva, people are going to say, people are going to say, look, the, what used to be prohibited is permissible now. That means that they came from a, a, 
a, a, a higher level of kedusha of separation, and now they're going to a place that's less holy because what was prohibited before is permissible now. That's the reason. Why is that not sufficient? Why did Amemar have to come up with a new reason of people are going to make a mistake? And uh, uh, um, as Rashi says, Erva is in the eyes of all people, and people may actually follow. Um, yeah, Jacob loves him, Nosher, because everybody marries. And if you let, allow them to marry, then other Jews will also make this mistake and marry. So Texas asked this question, and and uh, um, Texas has has uh, is is um, a distinction between the father's relatives and the mother's relatives. For the mother, which would have been prohibited even when they were married as a non-Jew, when they were uh, not Jewish, their mother's relatives are prohibited to them. So therefore, that's the reason why. Um, uh, why um, there, there's a prohibition on, on erva from the mother's relatives on the count of that people are going to say it was prohibited before, it should be prohibited now as well. Um, otherwise, Judaism Torah seems to be less kadosh, less holy. Whereas the relatives from the father's side are not prohibited beforehand, and therefore, they are. They, um, that's not a reason to be to be considered a, an erva. Therefore, the the erva from the uh, from half siblings from the father's side. For that, we have to have the reason that it's masura lakol. Everybody gets married, and everybody picks a partner. And therefore, they're going to uh, when they pick a spouse. If they see that a ger picks a relative, so they may a, a, a born Yisrael may also pick a relative. That's that's to a reason. Now, what, what what's unique over here is that we have to try and analyze this. In whose eyes would have a mother's relatives been prohibited to marry before gerus, and a a and a father's relative not? Is this a halachic thing? or a common conception. Now, today, for sure, in the common world, that wouldn't be a thing. There's no distinction between a half-sibling from a father, a half-sibling from a mother. In the, se- in, the, in, the, in the secular world, in the non-Jewish world, that's all considered um, uh, you know, a relative and prohibited. So, or, is Tessa saying, in the eyes of the secular world in their day, that would not have been a prohibition? Or is this saying in halacha, that wouldn't be a prohibition? And this is relevant because we have a machlokas between uh, the Rambam and the Ritva. The Rambam says that uh, uh, the reason why a, 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 a ger or a gioris have to have kibbut aim to their not Jewish parent is because otherwise people are going to say, look, before they were Jewish, they they honored their parents. Now that they're Jewish, they're, they don't honor their parents. And therefore, they're obligated to give it away. Meaning that on a halachic level, in the Aser Sadibras, when it says, it's talking about your Jewish father, your Jewish mother. And there's no mitzvah on a Torah level for a Jew to honor uh, um, their non-Jewish mother or non-Jewish father. However, since it won't look good, since people are going to say, wait, before you were Jewish, you had this great uh, mitzvah, this obligation of honoring your parents, and now you don't have this mitzvah. Now, the truth is, there is no mitzvah on it from, from a halachic standpoint. There is no mitzvah for a non-Jew to honor their parents. It's not one of the seven mitzvahs that a non-Jew has. So it's only in a, a concept in their own mind, in, in, the, in, the, in the secular society, in the world. But it isn't a halachic thing. So we see that the Rambam uses this concept of shaloyoyimru 
that people not say that the convert moved from a, a more holy, um, from a Kaddish place to a less Kaddish place. That's the reason for Kibbut Aim for, for a Ger and a Georis, for their, their non-Jewish parent. And we see that the Rambam is not, doesn't learn that it has to be a halachic concept, but rather any concept. If in the mind of society that would have been prohibited, to the to, to the person before Jew, before they became Jewish, then when they're Jewish, it also would have to be prohibited. So then over here, we would have to say that according to that, according to that concept in the Rambam, that that uh, whatever they did beforehand would have been uh, uh, um, that what this that Tosis makes a distinction that their father that their half sibling from a father would not be prohibited to them as much as a half-sibling from a mother. That would have to be a societal norm, not a halachic thing. Because whatever society thinks is, is prohibited to a non-Jew must also be prohibited to them as a Jew, because otherwise it's going to look like they downgraded their kedusha from where they were to where they are now. However, the Ritva says, no, Mr. Ritva later in this Masechta, where he, he says that it's only what halachically applied before is what halachically must apply now. And if something was not halachically prohibited before, and even if society thought that it should be prohibited, so what? Halachically it's permissible, so that is also going to be permissible once they marry. This is an interesting uh, uh, halachic concept. Lema'is Allah, we say that anything that, that society would have held as a prohibition, as a, as a sanctity thing before becoming a ger, then the ger now has to keep that as well on account of it doesn't look like they're going down a level in condition. So would the Ritva say that um, a ger isn't chayev and kibud aim for their non-Jewish parents? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the Ritva says on that. I don't know if he holds that there is some sort of mitzvah kibbit avayim that they do have, not like the Rambam. And that would maybe be included in, in dinim or something else. Or, or he holds that, they, yeah, they're not obligated. Does, does, does the Rambam say that um, explicitly in our situation, or you're just extrapolating from what he says on kibbit avayim to our situation? I'm extrapolating from the Rambam there to him. Mishnah. So Mishnah says, this is at the bottom of base. the Mishnah says, Mishnah says, Any brother that the deceased has would now inherit that, that, that uh, marriage of the, the brother who died without children. He inherits it and, and does Zika to Yibu. Now, what kind of brother is it? Why does it say any type of brother? And what's it coming to add? So the Gemara says, It's coming to add a mamzer. Right? And it says, it's talking about where the one who died is not a mamzer, and the brother who survived is a mamzer. And, uh, um, and nevertheless, it's going to have a mitzvah's yibum. They, there are, I want to say, there's a, something that came up very, uh, uh, came up a lot in um, it, it came up a lot in, 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 in just practically in Yibum, where there was one brother who died, and a, the brother who survived was a Mumar, no longer practiced Judaism. He left Judaism, whether he had converted to another religion or just left it entirely uh, alone, whatever, he's out. So he's a Mumar. Is there a mitzvah of Yibum? And there are those who wanted to bring proof from our Gemara. And this is a halacha, a uh, lengthy halacha with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, applications. A lot of chubas about it because unfortunately it happened very often where the brother wouldn't want to come. Right? He lived in another town. He said, I'm not traveling there to, to, to do chalitza. Right? And you come here. And she, she couldn't come for whatever reason. She was ill, whatever it may be. And now she couldn't remarry because there was a brother somewhere who, who, was, who was Christian or, 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 or just not involved in Judaism. They didn't want to join. So the, they wanted to bring a riot. The Gemara over here says a brother, any type of brother obligates. 
But the Gemara says, what's it adding? It's adding Mamzer. Why did the Gemara say adding Mumar? Why did it say Mamzer? Or say both, adding Mumar and Mamzer. So from the fact that it didn't say Mumar, there are many Chubas and, and, and perhaps seemingly even in Rishonim that want to say that that must be that Mumar is not included and there's no obligation, there's no Zika to a Mumar. There's no Zika to a Mumar. Um, they bring this... Uh, So, so Shlema Eger in the back in the Gemara and the Gilead Masha says actually no proof because the Gemara says, the Mishnah says, a brother, any type of brother is obligated in, it, be, it becomes obligated in Yibum, meaning it inherits the, the marriage and is, does a Zika of Yibum. And he's his brother in every matter. So that's true for a Mamzer. That part is true for a Mamzer. That part's not true for a Mumar. So how do you know the reason why it didn't mention Mumar is on account of that the Mumar is not obligated in Yibum? Maybe it didn't mention Mumar because the Mumar is not obligated in the second part of the Mishnah, which is he's your brother in all matters. And, uh, as the Gemara says, a Mumar ain't a Yerish. A Mumar doesn't inherit. Okay, so various halachic things, but the the Mepharshim, there's a lot of Mepharshim who do learn that a Mumar may not be included. And uh, uh, so there's a question. First of all, is he, uh, 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 so the, the Ritva says, since the Torah says it has to be Achiv L'chol it has to be your brother. And a Mumar is not your brother because he's not Achiv B'mitzvos. He doesn't do mitzvos like you. He's not, the, he's not in the same space as you. And so he doesn't do that. Uh, similarly, the Torah Sarit says, it, had, it says in the Torah, uh, if there are two brothers alive at the same time in the same world, uh, um, uh, um, he's, he's not a brother in his world. The Torah said, when they live together, the Ritva says they're not achim, they're not, the, 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 the Torah says they're not together, they're not in the same world. Um, the other, uh, the Ritva says another reason, the Torah says in order to establish the name of the brother by, by giving him zera, by giving him descendants these are not descendants of the brother They're, if he has children and, is, and he's a mummer, so his children are not going to be Jewish and that's not, that's not cho- children for the brother, the deceased brother um, the 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 uh, Avni Meluim, which Rishlem Eger, which is a question of Rishlem Eger. Avni Meluim says ba- basically what Rishlem Eger says that the reason why Mumer can't be in the Mishnah is because he's not his brother in regards to inheritance. Says the Avni Meluim, if he's not his brother in regards to inheritance, we know that the Torah depend made it achla nachla. It has to be a brother that inherits and that inherits the the deceased brother. They they're both inheriting their father, and he is not a brother of Lanachla because a mumer doesn't have an inheritance together with the brother. Well, if that's the case, so so that's why he also doesn't have yibum. So Shlomo Eger said, you know what? Shad of the Mishnah is that the reason he doesn't mention mumer in the Gemara, the reason why he doesn't say mumer is because he can't inherit. So the next part of the Mishnah is is not true, that, uh, that he's his brother in every manner, uh, yeah, but if he's not inheriting, he's also not obligated in Yibum. That's the way the Avon and uh, There's There's a, a chiddush in the Ga'onim, that they say a new idea, that there's a Tanai in the original marriage. The Ga'onim say that even according to the opinion, we saw this earlier in the Gemara, what, was, what makes the passage of the Kiddushin from the deceased brother to the surviving brother, to the Yavah? Is it the original Kiddushin or is it the death of the Kiddushin Rishonim Apilim? The original Kiddushin is what passes the, ma- the marriage on? Or is it the death of the deceased brother that passes the marriage on? And even though we hold 
that it's the death that uh, passes on. Either way, the Gaidim say, but he has to have been a Mumar at the time that the, the, uh, um, that the original marriage was made. And so there, the reason that there would be no Zika for a Mumar is because there was an inherent condition in the marriage. Reuven marries Leah, and he has a brother who had converted to Christianity, who was a Mumar. So at that point, inherent in the Kiddushin is, when she accepts the Kiddushin, should you die, should you, Reuven, die um, with, uh, without children, that there's no Yibum, that this Kiddushin doesn't pass on to, to the brother that's a Mumar. That's a chiddush, and that's what the Gaidim is saying. That if if they if he was a mumar at the time of the original marriage, then there there's no mitzvah, even there's no zika. Is that the idea, of like lay based in his mas his masna? I don't know if lay based in or liban, but that kind of idea. This is this is inherent in the yeah. Maybe based in makes that tonight. I don't have to see the lashon of the Gaonim, whether it's a it's a based in Tanai or it's an inherent uh, um, Tanai in 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 their actions themselves. I don't it's just know. like saying that a person in like would never do that. Like it's just obvious that it, it's well, obvious like, they wouldn't want. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one one of the things that that this comes up in the Ramah says a big chiddush. In Halacha and Shulchan Aruch, that if there are two brothers, even though we say that there is a Mumar, that the Mumar does have Zika, if there are two brothers that survive, one who's a Mumar, one who's not, then only the the Yavam that's not a Mumar has Zika. Therefore, the Rama says, if the brother who's a Mumar does Chalitza, it may not exempt the woman yet. She may still need Chalitza from the other brother. It's a, it's a big chiddush, and, and there's a lot written on that. Like, well, well, how can that be? Uh, but maybe it's only xera, whatever. It's a big sugya. But this concept that whether or not a mumer even has zika. But a mamzer, a mamzer has zika. Um, the, the Gemara says, for them, let's see, man, let's see, mamzer, shita, achifu. So Gemara says, of course, if there's a, if there's a, it's his brother. Why would there be no zika? I may think that it needs to be brotherhood, like the children of Yaakov, just like over there they share him, so they have they share him, and not, and not anyone that is, uh, is puzzled. Now the Gemara, the truth is, what's the case over here? This lechara. The, the Zika over here is a mitzvah sase. And uh, we have a seder cholesase. Here's our classic a seder cholesase. Now we had the Gemara in, in, in last week's staff. Rava said that it doesn't count as an a seder cholesase. Why? Because you actually have two, uh, two options in, in, in uh, Zika. You can either do yibum or you can do chalitza. And since you can do chalitza, so they, you can't tell me, I'll say the chalitza, say, because it's ef shalakayim, ayyadeh chalitza. You can do it by chalitza. Whereas uh, uh, the, uh, the other shita says, no, because chalitza, but makam yibum, ain't a mitzvah. That's not the mitzvah. Now, over here, the rush says, we see from our Gemara, our Gemara is not like Rava. Because our Gemara says, what is the Mishnah adding by saying, uh, a, a brother, any brother, Mikomakun, any brother, who's that brother? It's going to be a brother of, uh, uh, um, it's going to be a, 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 a Mamzer. But that means in our Mishnah, the Gemara is learning that our Mishnah says that a Mamzer has a Zika of Yibum. According to Rava, there's no Zika of Yibum, there's only a Zika Chalitza. You only have the mitzvah of Chalitza. Now, the, the truth is, as we mentioned briefly last week, uh, that there's a, there's a machlokas over here in the Gemara, there in Rava, is what, how do we define chalitza? Is chalitza a mitzvah? Or is chalitza simply 
if you're not going to do yibum, you have to do a get. There's no get. It's sort of like the 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 out from the from the zika is chalitza. But the mitzvah is yibum. It's 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 a divorce. It's not a mitzvah. But Rava saying no, it's a mitzvah. Rava holds chalitza as its own independent mitzvah. Well, not independent mitzvah. It's a, it's a mitzvah. Now, if it's a mitzvah, so so therefore he says, look, I can fulfill the mitzvah with this just as much as this. But Rava cannot learn that it's an independent mitzvah, because as we saw, if it's an independent mitzvah, there's a mitzvah of chalitza and there's a mitzvah of yibum. So then I cannot do the yibum. I can, true, I could do chalitza, and that's similar to what we talked about the other week about uh, having linen garments and and wool and wool tzitzis, where we say, wait, just put on a, a, a wool garment. Yeah, but I can't fulfill my mitzvah with the linen garment unless I have shotness. So too over here, I can't fulfill my mitzvah's yibum unless I I I uh, 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 unless I transgress this iser mamzer. So so the 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 uh, Gemara, the Rosh Hashanah is saying our Gemara is not like, is not like Rav. We don't have time, but the Gemara also talks about what is a son. If he has any child is also included. What's that child? The child is a Mamzer, which tells us a very interesting thing, that there's a concept of fulfilling the mitzvah of Piri of review. You can fulfill the obligation of having children, even if the child's a Mamzer. Now, Usually, if the child's a mamzer, it means that the parents did a did an iser, they transgressed something. So that would be a mitzvah hababa avera. There's a mechas famous question in the, in, in, in the first mitzvah of the Torah, right? In this week's parsha, the mechas chinuch on the first mitzvah says piri verivia. The Torah says that you should be fruitful and multiply. There's a mitzvah to have piri verivia. Can you fulfill that with a mamzer? It's interesting. Just uh, to touch on this, that the, there's a concept in Allah, uh, a question in halacha is what is the mitzvah of Piri Verivia? Is it that the, the having the child? And somebody who unfortunately has no children, as much as they tried, they have not fulfilled the mitzvah. Some, many are trying to say, many say that the Torah can't, can't ob, does not, I can't, it doesn't obligate outcomes, it obligates actions. And there too, there's a machlekes now. Is the mitzvah marriage, or 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 is it cohabitation? That's the question of, of that mitzvah as well. In bircha in the brachas of the of under the chuppah, there's a machlekes of Rambam and Rush. Is it a birchas hamitzvahs or a birchas ashvach? Is it a bracha on a mitzvah, meaning the kiddushin itself is the mitzvah, or is the kiddushin only a hechsher mitzvah? A, 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 it's 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 a prerequisite to get to the mitzvah, but the mitzvah is is the consummation. In any case, uh, um, it's an interesting question, and it, it, it's about this this week's parsha of the mitzvah Piri Verivia. What's the purpose of Piri Verivia? Um, is it just having children, any type, and even a mamzer would count? Or no, you cannot fulfill the mitzvah with that. It has to be children that are misyaches to you, that are mitzvah, that, are, that it has to be a mitzvah to do, etc. That's your car.